Apostles built the church by going house to house. That's right. That's right. And teaching and sharing the word of God and helping people to understand the doctrine of the Lord. Yes. Right. And any church that has any sort of growth, the church that gets large, is because the people are sharing the word of God. Amen. Amen. Then the pastor can preach to them. But we got to be able to get them started and build a foundation where they can understand the word of God. Amen. And then that's how you make disciples. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Disciples isn't just for the pastor to have. The saints are supposed to have That's disciples. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And the disciple is just a follower. Right. Right. It's a follower. And trust me, you can have a very, very powerful ministry mm. by sharing the word of God with other people. That's right. As you share everything else that's in your life. Yeah. And it is what will cause the church to fill up. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be um, going through and learning some things about teaching the Bible study and drawing people onto the truth of God's word. Amen. 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 So I had, uh, again, Brother Hicks passed out. I know some of you already have the Bible study I'm going to use tonight. And um, 
I'm not going to do the whole Bible study tonight uh, because it is too long. It can be taught in one session, but for tonight, for learning purposes, I want us to go through just uh, some parts of it. All right? All right. All right. All right. I know that don't sound exciting, but it will no, get excited. Good. Yes. Yes. Good. It will get excited. Yes. Amen. Amen. My, my purpose in this is, of course, Brother Stanley teaches uh, exploring God's word, and you see the results of it in here in so many different places. And um, if you know somebody, come to that Bible study, share, and, and learn um, with, brother, with Brother Stanley and bring somebody. It'll help you make a friendship. Yes. It'll cause them to have conversation with you after you overhear the word of God and they have something to talk about. That's right. You can build a friendship. And uh, but you get grounded in the word of God and it it will bless you. Yes. Yes. You will enjoy preaching better, you will enjoy prayer better. Yes. Right. You will you, you'll have more courage about witnessing uh, because everything will be laid out for you. Amen. 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 What I have tonight is a shorter version um, that you can use when you have to make a decision. Um, somebody needs to know the word of God like right now. And, um, and so what I've done now, um, I used to teach this one God's word in one of the other Salvation Bible studies. But since I discovered this one, um, I like to do this one and then do this one God's word. They're similar. One will walk with the other, and uh, but this is a good one because you have the person to know the basis of um, New Testament salvation. So then, when you go back and share the rest of the Bible, it all walks together. Amen. 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 All right, I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna get right to it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I praise you tonight. I thank you for your people. I thank you for the Word of God. I ask you, Lord God, to move again. You've already moved among us. And we're so thankful. Lord God, I pray that you would anoint my mind and my heart today and anoint the ears of your people. Help us, Lord God, to be the church that you want us to be. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to be able to share what thou has given us, Lord God, and others who want to love you also and obey thy word. In the name of Jesus, I give you the praise and glory. But everybody said in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And you can be it. Amen. I'm Amen. thankful. Sister Trebell is in the house of God tonight. Amen. Amen. If it wasn't for her, you'd be missing a preacher. Amen. Come on. Come on now. We met his, she, we met his friends, and she didn't know nothing about copiers and Fax machines, and I didn't know nothing about Jesus' name baptism. <laughs> so, so God brought all that together, and she, she got where I didn't have to go help her with the copy machine. And, uh, and I got where she didn't have to tell me how to get people baptized. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> Amen. It, it was a relationship made in heaven. Right. Amen. But, um, some basic things here. Why why do we want to give people Bible study? And um, because we need to realize what time frame in life we're in. Yeah. Right. Right. But if you want to start us off and go to Luke chapter 17 and read verse 28 to 30. And um, Brother GW, I know I'm wearing you out tonight. Get 2 Timothy chapter 3. You can read verses 2 through 4. Luke 17, mm -hmm. 28 through 30. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Okay. So, one of the reasons we want, we want to have an urgency in our spirit about helping people is because that day is just going to come. Right. People are going to be doing their normal things mm -hmm. yes. very soon. Yes. 
They're going to be doing their normal things, and all of a sudden, the church is going to lift up. And, and the New Testament salvation is going to be gone with it. It's going to be gone with it. Amen. And so we, the devil knows that he has but a little time. So we better know. That whoever we're trying to reach, we only got a little bit of time. And we, we can't we can't keep sitting back and hoping and hoping and hoping they're going to get it. And we're the vessel that's on assignment. And so we can see everything that's happening in our world is approaching that day more and more and more. But you know, we give us 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 through 4. For well, men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, loving the pleasures more than lovers of God. Amen. 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 So with all of this that the days of life and people are not expecting this to happen, but they're the ones that's telling us that it's going to happen. Exactly. Their lifestyles, their ways, the thing that's going on on earth is telling us that it's about to happen. Right. You know, and I guarantee you when he read all of those things right there that um, the perilous times of people I guarantee you, you was once like some of those, and I guarantee you know some people right now mm -hmm. that are doing probably at least one third of those things. That's right. Oh yeah. They 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 need our help. Yes. They need Jesus' help. In fact, you know our world is so full of sin. It's it's a joy and a surprise when you see something good going on. That's right. Yeah. So. Even some of the nicer things in in the earth, but it's all. Um, made for people to gain to themselves. Right. right. You know, it's all about showing off. That's right. You know, it's all about getting gain. It's all about moving past the next person and getting my name known better than anybody else's name. Mm -hmm. And so we need to get the name of Jesus known. Amen. 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 That's the name that's above every other name. Amen. That's right. That's the name that everybody needs to know. Everybody needs to fall down and worship that name. Amen. Right? And so you, when you begin to teach people, you want to take them into place here with these two sets of scriptures and kind of name the era that they're living in and remind them that these things are showing the second coming of the Lord. Amen. And that is happening to all people because they're going to be able to see it. As I said, you know, you all and we all know somebody that's doing all of these things or many of these things. And so it will help to bring the understanding of what day and hour that we're living in. Yeah. It's a warning. Okay. Also, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 24. First person to get that say, praise the Lord. Somebody else get Mark 13 and 7. Praise the Lord. Matthew 24 and 6. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And so the end is not yet, but we've been seeing wars and rumors of wars for over 100 years now. That's true. Just war after war after war after war going on. And our country has been in the midst of them. And good thing we've been on the victory side. That's right. Amen. And so it's fast approaching that. And they're getting the spirit where they want to gang up on us. Right. Because right. we're, stand, we're standing in the way of the will of God for Israel. They, they want to get Israel. They want to get the Christian church out the way so they can just have sin and have nothing pricking them. Right. Yep. Amen. When people are sinning and they see real born again Christians, it's piercing going on. Amen. Like it was with Paul the Apostle. Just keep piercing the heart. That's right. And, and uh, people don't like to be convicted. Mm -mm. No. No. They hate. They hate to feel like they 
that they're wrong. You know, everybody says the first thing you, that I always hear when I talk to somebody about Jesus, we might just be having a conversation. I'm just talking about something that Jesus is doing. I ain't, I ain't even talking about them. And the first thing they'll say is, I'm a good person. Yeah. <laughs> comes right to mind. I just thought you wasn't a good person, but it comes right to mind. I'm a good person. Right. <laughs> And, and they'll start naming to you all the things they don't do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And so we're in the last days and the Lord is pouring his spirit out on all flesh. Amen. On all flesh. Right. And so they're feeling the conviction of God, even though they're enjoying <laughs> all the pleasures of sin for a season. Right. Yes. But they're still feeling the conviction of God because God is pouring his spirit out whether they want it or not. Amen. That's right. And they're feeling it. Right. And they're wondering. Especially the, and e even the ones that go to church. And the ones that used to go to church. And they went to dead churches. And they're, they're wondering on the inside. Is this something more powerful than this? That's yes. right. It's That's just true. plain old talk. Ain't going to get me to stop sinning. That's right. I need something to bring me out of it. Come on. That's, yes. Right. Yes. That's right. Come on. You know. And, and they're, 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 their ear will perk up when you start telling them. And you... If you can get them alone and get the word of God, get the Bible out and show them what's going on. Right here in Matthew chapter 24, read verse 7 as well. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Wow, haven't we seen all that? Yeah, lately. We've seen all that lately yep. and often. Mm -hmm. And often. I was, I was looking in the... Um, looking up something and found out that, you know, how many different little pandemics we had in the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been a lot of them. Yeah. Yep. And, and more and more, they're, they're, they're believing more and more that they're playing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Mm -hmm. That's right. The people not holding their tongue about it no more. Right. right. They figure, you know, what, what they already did, they ain't got away with it. Ain't nothing you can do about it now. Right. Mm -hmm. But... The world is getting bolder and bolder and bolder so about right. the things that they're doing. Somebody, who was in Luke? Whoever was in Luke, get 21 verse 11. I'm good. Okay. Luke 21 and 11. Then great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. And famines and pestilence and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Okay, great signs from heaven, fearful sights. Fearful sights. They're discovering all kinds of things now. It's causing people to be afraid. And so, let me see here. Sister Tremel, why don't you get Isaiah 31 and 5? about the size of the state of Arkansas. It's one of the smallest nations on the planet. And they had been ran away from it years ago and then they came back and God let them back possess it. And so after they had possessed it, now all of the guns and everything is pointing toward them. Yeah, that's right. For years and years and years the Arabs have wanted to overrun Jerusalem. Yeah. Right. They just they just itching to do it. You know, and out the corner of their eye, they always have to look at the United States and Hungary and, and England. You know, they'll get in it if we get in it. And um, they've always had that little thing. That's why they moving us out of the way, taking finance, keeping them busy so that they can't get involved and so they can um, go after Israel. Israel just, they got guns pointed at Israel. They got air forces that want to just go to Israel anytime they can get ready. 
But they also have something else that's been going on for the longest time. Another reason why they won't overrun it. Israel being one of the smallest countries, but they have the most fearful air force on the planet. Mm -hmm. And they don't even have some of the stuff we have. But everybody fears Israel's um, air force. Right in, right. Two reasons. One, because if they, every time somebody comes across the border, they use it. Mm -hmm. That's right. They, they don't call the UN and right. have a meeting and they don't, you know, have a summit and all that kind of stuff and say, is it all right if we attack so-and-so? Y'all going to be upset? They don't ask nobody. If they come over there and bother you, they just load the planes up and they go in and bomb them right back. Right. They're, they're fearless when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. And this is a promise from God. Okay? And that's the other reason, because God is with them. Right. right. And he strikes terror and fear in countries that want to cross Israel's border. That's right. right. That's why I come you got all these gigantic nations, and they're holding, uh, they're sitting and waiting for an opportunity to go across and go after Israel. Mm. But, but they don't, they're, they're, they're terrified. You know, they had to get all of them together to go after a little itty-bitty Israel. Because the hand of the hand of God has been on them because he promised them they're not going to lose their land anymore. Right. right. And so there's a terror about them. And so that's another sign of the end time. Amen. 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 And so you want to explain these things to somebody when you're talking to them about the word of God because it's going to bring their mind around to the time that they're living in. And it's biblical evidence and it also helps them understand that Israel is a target. That's right. right. Okay. And so, another thing you want to do, you want to explain the word of God. Okay. And so, how is the word of God um, written? Okay. Uh, how did man, excuse me, how did God talk to man all of his time? Okay. First of all, there was no written word. It was given orally. Okay, as like, he, like he spoke to Adam and he spoke to several of the, the men in the beginning of the Old Testament. Okay. And then how many of people know how many authors it is? How many people authored the Bible? One. One. Right. There's a lot of writers. The writers can copy. But there's only one author. That's right. It's the word of God. Right. In the beginning was the word, the word uh, the word was with God. The word was God. Amen. Okay. And so now the first time it was written was the covenant, Ten Commandments, written by God, given to Moses. Amen. Okay. Scribes copied it, and then they read it back to Israel every seven years. Amen. Man, we go dry. We had to wait seven years to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Thank God now it says you, you, if you want the Bible, you can find it. It is the most copied book on the planet. Yeah. That's right. And now it's in all sorts of different ways. You can get it. Tapes and CDs and you can Google it and everything else. Right. And so it's prospered so many powerful ways. But the Old Testament has probably 25 writers, 39 books from kings to farmers. Somebody give me 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. I'm doing this because these are facts that you want to introduce to a person. Right. Even if, even if they think they know the Bible, even if you know they know something about the Bible, you still want to introduce these facts oh, to them. That's right. Because you want to, you want to get, on, get them on the same page and have them also understand that you know about what you're teaching them. That's right. You know the original, uh, origination of it. Okay? Who, who has first, uh, Second Peter 1 and 21? Okay. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Okay. And so it wasn't the will of man for the Bible to be written. That's right. Holy men wrote because God spake to them. Right. And he spake through them. Right. That's a very important factor that we need to know, and we need to let that be known when we're sharing it. Okay, then I'm not telling you what I said. I'm telling you what he said. Yes. Right. I'm showing you how God's word is going to work together. Yes. It ain't about me. It's about him. That's right. But they need to see the evidence of that. 
Okay, because a lot of people don't don't know that they God wrote the Bible. They, that's one reason why some people don't want Bible study. They say, "Oh man, wrote it and they corrupted it." And, right. You know. And so, so the New Testament was written by eight writers, twenty-seven books, approximately a hundred years of church history. The whole Bible covers thirty-six hundred years of man's history. Okay, and the first time it was printed was in fourteen fifty-five. Well, what's it all about? Yeah, it's about Jesus. Okay, so let's get Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And the same person be ready for 7 and 14. We'll try to get Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Who has Isaiah 9 and 6? Isaiah 9 and 6, one to us, a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Okay? And so, straight out, he's telling you that Jesus is God. Yes. Right. Setting it up right there. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. Okay? And then it named all the names that, that God is. But it's all attributed to that son. Yes. Amen. So one that's less than right there. That's one of the most eye-opening scriptures that you'll ever read. Yes, it is. Right. It's a good thing to share it quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And get, get, them, get them to thinking. Okay? Matthew 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. All right. And so then it goes there, that same scripture. Um, where is Isaiah 7 and 14? Okay. Uh, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay. And so all that was named beforehand, way back there in the Old Testament, is prophesied. And then all of a sudden, here it is, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, right in the beginning of, of the New Testament, and it's telling you what name is connected again. Right. His son, the name of Jesus. Read, read the next two verses, 22 and 23, Brother Trey. In Matthew? Yeah. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Okay. So here you go. Here's the first time that there will be a real connection. Okay, Because you identified Emmanuel in the Old Testament, now you're identifying who Emmanuel is in the New Testament. Right. right. You ought to start getting some questions after that. That's good. Because a lot of people do not realize that. They don't, they, most, most churches don't even teach that. No. They don't even talk about it, let alone just a plain person that's just going to another church. That will cause you to get attention. It cause you to get some questions. And so you want to be prepared for the questions. So that's why I come on the back of the a uh, Bible study list that I gave you there, there's a bunch of Godhead scriptures on the back. Okay? And showing Jesus as the Savior. Show, showing him um, as, you know, all the different names of Jesus in the Old Testament that matches up, including Emmanuel. All right. So, now you need to establish the fact that Jesus is, is, a, is a child and he's in the human flesh. So let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse 42. And we'll jump around there and loop a little bit. Because you're going to have that question. And you do want to under, want people to understand that he was a man. Right, right. And we're not denying that he was a man. I got Luke 2. Okay. And 42. Go ahead. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Okay, go ahead and read 
46 and 47. 46, 46, 47. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Okay, so he was doing all that in the flesh. Read verse 52. Verse 52, and Jesus increased his wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Okay, so then showing that he was a little boy, so he had to do the same thing that all other little boys had to do. He had to be something to his parents. But they were traveling and he had stuck off. Okay, and he was back there, but he's already, the power of God was in him. He answering all these scribes and Pharisees and, and asking them some questions I'm quite sure that was making their ears burn. And, and then they was they were asking him questions, and then their ears were burning again at his answers. Right. And so the fire of God, hallelujah, was coming from him, from his lips, that great understanding that he had. But he was God rolled in the flesh. Yes. Right. Okay. Amen. He still was God rolled in the flesh. Amen. Okay. Yes. We're not denying the fact that he was made a man, mm -hmm. okay, for the purpose of suffering. Okay? And also for the purpose of example. Okay, the Bible right. tells you later in the New Testament that Jesus was an example. Okay? Right. There's many scriptures that you can back up with that. That's why the apostles asked him, oh Lord, teach us to pray. Because they had watched how he prayed and the power that was in his prayers. Right. Okay? Uh, he was making an example there. So they wanted to be like him. Right. They wanted to have the same power in their prayers. Okay, And so many other things that he did not walk in in the flesh and right. caused them to want to be like him. Amen. 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 So make sure when you're doing this that you be like him. Amen. Right. Amen. Okay. Make sure you be like him. Don't don't, don't fall in teaching the Bible study looking like, you know looking like you just walked out the club. Right. You know, make sure that you know you're dressed appropriately. And you took a bath at least. You know, and and make sure that you know you don't um. He eat a big plate full of fish and go talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> and distract their attention. <laughs> oh my God. All these other little, little things. And make sure, you know, you, you're carrying yourself well. Because they're, they're going to be measuring Jesus up to you. Amen. And because when, when people are convicted of their sins and convicted of, of their wrongs, okay, and you're the convictor, okay, and it's actually God, but you're the, the human one. They're going to look back at you and try to find something wrong. That's right. So he said, if you're, if you was a follower of Jesus, why would you be doing this and acting right. like that and talking like this? You know, and so your credibility is going to be important. Right. It's going to be important. All right. Luke chapter 3, verse 23. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years old, uh, 30 years of age, being as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Hela. And then it goes on down through the genealogy. Okay, once again, establishing that he was a man, but here he was getting, getting himself ready. He was uh, becoming a, a grown man, going to be a um, witness, wanting to be a witness. Go to verse I think it's 13. Here, let me see here. Let me make sure. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. Go ahead and read that, Brother Trey. Matthew 3, mm -hmm. 13 through 17. That's correct. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it is become us to fulfill all righteousness. And then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened up unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. A low a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. All right. Now, what's the reason why come we want to read that scripture or that set of scriptures? I just told you a minute ago. 
Example. Example. Because when you take a look in the rest of the scriptures and you tell them that they need to be baptized, okay, Jesus set an example of being baptized. Right. Sure he didn't have no sins. Right. And they didn't put they didn't they didn't use no name. Why? Because he hadn't been exalted yet. Right. He hadn't been risen from the grave yet, showing that he was God. So it wasn't time to exalt his name. It wouldn't have been anything at that point. Okay? But he showed the example because the Jews. They baptized other people, but they didn't baptize people. They were living off of the baptism that when they went through the Red Sea, okay, and so all their ancestors was automatically baptized. Right. Okay, but in the New Testament, it was, you know, uh, taking that away. We don't have to be individually baptized. Right. Right. And so Jesus set the example there by getting baptized by John the Baptist, who they saw as the man of God. Amen. 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 And then the Lord, you can use this, and then the Lord showed the great example by showing up. Right. Sure did. And the power of God came down on Jesus, and then the voice came and said, you know, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. I always tell people that mean, when you get baptized, God's pleased. Amen. 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 And so uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. All right. And so there is giving the terms of discipleship. Right. This is what it takes to be a disciple of Jesus. Okay? You need to take up your cross and things that you have to bear in order to, to live for God and follow me. Yeah. All right? Okay? And so he already gave us some examples already. Okay, you got to be baptized. Okay, and so, but he's saying, follow me, do the things that I'm doing. And so there's an example there showing people that that's what Jesus wants, is for you to follow him. Amen. Amen. All, right. Amen. All right. Okay, let's go to John chapter 3. John 3, 3 through 5. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Okay, so now you teach. Now you have these other, other examples, and now you're bringing forth the way to get it done. Right, amen. Starting to show revelation. Make sure you read the way Brother Higgs wrote it. Read, read it. He, he, he read it. It was some rhythm in it. Okay? It was convincing. Okay? And so um, he gave the example in, in the inflection of his voice. The words verily, verily means truly, truly. It means truly, truly. You might want to tell him that. Okay? Jesus is saying truly, truly. Okay? Because he is the way, the truth. Okay? And so we, we, we want to. Make sure that we convey that message. This is the truth. Amen. Amen. This is the truth. That's right. That's right. Okay. And so, but they got to be born of the water and the spirit. And who's saying it? Jesus. Jesus. Right. One of the things I always like to tell people that don't know much about God is, if you notice these things, it's the Savior himself is telling you how to get to him. That's exactly Amen. It's the Savior himself. He's, he's telling you how to get to him. Because yes. this man was hungry. Okay, he was a ruler of the Jews. He had been following the Jews' religion. 
But he saw the miracles and the power of Jesus. And so when, when, when he had a chance, he stuck away from the crowd and caught Jesus by himself. Sure did. And, and, you know, and gave him a compliment. But Jesus didn't play around with him. He went directly to the word. Okay, he was looking in his heart. Okay, he, he wanted to know how to get how to get to heaven. He done, he done seen enough. And so he, he told him he got to be born of the water and of the spirit. Amen. So you want to make sure that you share that with somebody when you find a hungry heart, right. a hungry soul. Right. Make sure you feed it. Okay? And so then uh, continue on, Brother Hicks, in, in John, read verse 16. Verse, Brother, Brother read. Trey, you get Luke chapter 13. 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not only 16. Um, you go ahead and read the next one. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And so that the world through him might be saved. So now you didn't nail the purpose down again. Yeah. Right. You nailed the purpose down again after he had told you how to do it. Okay, Luke chapter 13, verse 3. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Uh oh. Now we get down to the nitty gritty. Okay? Unless you repent, ye shall likewise perish. As a matter of fact, he said it twice in that in that chapter, in that verse right there. In verse 5, I tell you nay. But except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Yeah, repentance needs to be uh, repeated. A lot of times people don't want to, they don't want that part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so when people talk about that sort of thing, you know, and the question was asked, how can a man be born again? You know, um, should he go, can he go back to his mother's womb, whatever? Okay. And so, no, the man got to die. Right. You can't be born again if you're not dead. Right. Okay, and that's the, the first element on the cross. You know, Jesus died on the cross first. Okay, and so you want to make sure that you explain that parallel. Okay, because that's that's going to answer that question, why do I got to repent? Okay, and that's what Jesus went to the cross for. And we want to make sure that we explain that because they will remember that. What's the best way to explain to someone what repentance is? Okay, um... There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about repentance as godly sorrow and turning away. Amen. Okay? And so, so you, you, you ain't going to be happy about repenting. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's godly sorrow. In other words, you're, you're repenting because God's been dealing with you. No man come up to God unless the Spirit draws him. Okay? Just like Paul the Apostle. He was doing all the havoc. But uh, he said, you know, you, you can't Kick against the pricks. Okay? I kept on piercing them. Kept on touching them. You know, this is wrong. You know, this is, you, know you ain't doing right. You know, you hurt my people. Right. You know, until he got to the point where he just you know, knocked him off his high horse. You know, and, and, and told me, you, you can't keep on running from the pricks. I'm, I'm, I've been calling, I've been telling you. Because usually, if somebody's willing to go to the place of a Bible study, they're already being pierced. They're not going to let you give them a Bible study unless they want to know what they need to do. So that's why I come. you want to take them through the different elements of it and you can explain it to them. And so that's what repentance is. And then I would explain it also that um, how can you be forgiven if you don't ask? Right. You got to ask for forgiveness. You don't get another human being to forgive you if you don't ask them. They just right. going to keep on being mad at you until you say you're sorry. Right. Okay. Well, now, here's the thing. When you're dealing with a person in a relationship and you want to forgive them, you ask, okay? But, um, <clears throat> I lost my train of thought. When you're dealing with God, okay, okay. Sin is against God. Mm -hmm, Even though it harms people. Right. And we need their forgiveness. But first off, sin is against God. All sin is against God. Right. Okay? And so that's why you had to ask him for forgiveness. 
asking your grandma for forgiveness ain't going to do no good. I've actually had to tell people that. You know, and, and, and it's good they've been taught right and wrong from their parents. And they want their parents to forgive them. But when it comes to eternal salvation, all sin is against God. People are the victim of your sin. But your sin is against God. If you haul off and punch somebody, they got a big fat jaw. They got the victim of your sin. But that sin was against God to strike another human being. Okay? And so they got to apologize to you forever. They forever condemned until they ask God to forgive them for all the fist fights that he been in. Amen? Amen. 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 Sure. And so that's the best way to open their ears up to that. All sin is against God. Amen. Will you repeat the other part about your son? The, the people, people are the victim of your son? Yes. People are the victims of your sin. If you steal, if you, if you steal the person that you stole from is the victim. And the Lord, and, and I experienced this, and the Lord may tell you to go back with some of your sins and ask for forgiveness for the person. Yeah. Because the Bible says if you uh, offend your brother, you're supposed to ask for forgiveness. Yeah, that's right. And then that's right. put it back on his shoulder, because now he got to listen. He got to forgive you 77 right. times in one day. That's right. God don't play that. That's right. Okay? And so, you know, and remember this. When a person is asking for forgiveness, they also have to forgive. Right. Amen. Why is that? Because God wants total healing. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. You can ask God to forgive you, but you still be sore on the inside. So you got to forgive people that hurt you. That's right. That's right. That's the only way you're going to get cleansed. That's the only way you're going to be pure. Mm -hmm. That's actually the hardest part. It is. Yeah. <laughs> You, you'll feel good after God forgive you, but you might not feel so good when it's time for you to forgive. Right. Praise God. And so, uh, it's, so that's the important thing to teach. And I guarantee you, if that is taught right, the rest of it becomes a whole lot easier. Yes. Amen. Because what will happen is, if they obey that, in fact, when you're teaching a Bible study there, this is a good time to say, let's do that right now. Let's do that right now. We, we, we don't need a written sinner's prayer. Right. You know, I always tell them, when they say, what, what am I supposed to say? I say, just be honest. Right. <laughs> o only you know everything you did. If, if you, you can't remember, well, it took it took me three months. And um, <laughs> so, somebody kept telling me, you know, you, know uh, uh, you don't have to repent no more now. <laughs> Not initially, you know. Right. I said, maybe you ain't seen the list. <laughs> I said, I want the Holy Ghost. We gotta quit repeating and start praying for the Holy Ghost. And uh, but you can tell them that they are allowed to lump them together. Yeah. Okay. But if they want to spend some time with it, let them. Amen. Because it's, it's some stuff down there. Because they're the ones who gotta believe that it's dislodged. So if they take a long time, just twiddle your thumbs and wait. Right. <laughs> Say, oh, Lord, help them. You know, maybe God can remind them quicker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. But everybody carries a different level of weight, so you want them to get all that weight off so they can flow free, freely yeah. when God enters them. God's wanting you to soar. Amen? Amen. 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 So we definitely want to teach repentance. Definitely want to yes. teach repentance. Yes. Did somebody get Luke chapter 13, verse 3 yes. through 5? We did that. Now go to Luke chapter 24 through 47 because this is an important set of scriptures. Because when you when you take them there to talk about repentance, you also uh, bring back some other words that have to do with what you're teaching. Okay, um, I'll, I'll start it. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. 
Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. That's what you want to pray for. That God opens their mind that they understand the scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins shall be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Okay, And so here's an open opportunity here because you could once again show them they need repentance. Okay, But then that remission of sins is also preached. Okay, And so how is remission of sins preached? In Acts 2 and 38. That's correct. Okay, repent and be baptized for what? The remission of sins. Yeah. Okay, and so now you're linking. You're linking all the scriptures together. Mm -hmm. And they won't be able to deny it. Okay, should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Okay, once again, it's mentioning his name. Okay, and so... Um, then, and ye shall be witness of these things, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, and ye shall be endured with power from on high. And so it's telling them that the Holy Ghost is coming. Okay? Right. Tell them to go to Jerusalem and get ready for the Holy Ghost. All right. We're going to stop here in a little bit. Go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. Um, Brother Hicks, since you're doing so good today, I want you, you to read Acts chapter 2 and read 37 and 38. Now, um, Brother G.W., read Colossians 2 and 12 and 3 and 17. 2 and 12. Buried with him in baptism wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who have raised him from the dead. Okay. Notice there, almost the whole gospel was preached right there in that little statement. Put it all together right there. Right. Once again, they're going to hear the whole thing again. Okay. Go ahead to verse 17. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Okay, my fault. I'm in the wrong part of Colossians. Go to Colossians 3, verse 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Okay, so now you're helping out your statement for doing it in Jesus' name again. Amen. Okay, because the Bible is telling you to do all of it in the name of Jesus, okay? And so that's the way you're going to get those sins remitted. remitted. All right? And so then you want them to um, be get prepared to receive the Holy Ghost. Okay? So after you go there and tell them how the burial works, then you want to bring all of it together. Okay? Brother Higgs, go ahead and read Acts chapter 2, verses 37 and 38. Acts 2, 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So now all that you have brought, all that you have showed them is now all brought together. Okay? All of us brought together. Okay, um, somebody get 5 and 32. I'm going to be done here in a little bit. And we are his witness of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey. Yeah, them that obey, they're going to get the Holy Ghost. You want to remind them of that, Okay. When you obey the word of God, you that you can get you can get the Holy Ghost. Amen. They, Amen. They, if they don't get it when you're praying or whatever, but they can get it by obeying the word of God. That's what I always want to start talking about baptism. I want to talk about baptism again. Say, because you gotta obey the word of God. Okay. I got baptized before, but let's get baptized again. 
If you ain't getting baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, like it's saying there, buried with him, not them. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Buried with him, not them. That's okay. Good. Uh, the apostles never baptized with a them. That's right. Okay. They always baptized just in him and Amen. only in his name. Amen. And so when you obey the word of God, then God can fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. And then you be in uh, obey Acts, I mean, uh, obey John 3 and 5 and all the other scriptures that you're showing them. Okay, that's how the obedience happens. Yes. Okay? And so after you've loaded them up with this much scripture, it should be a very easy understanding right there for them to do it. Okay. Amen. Now, okay. Um, We're going to go further the next time. And once again, more things to explain and break down. I just wanted to, at that point, I would explain this one last part here. Go to Matthew chapter 16. And you can either have them read from 18 to 19 or you can start at 13. Because this is a very important thing to teach. It's going to help you, especially if you're teaching or talking across the nominal lines. Okay, because the Bible is going to be specific which church belongs to God. Amen. Amen. Okay, who has it? Go ahead, read from 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea of Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and other Jeremiah, and one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom ye say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this, excuse me, not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I also, and I say also unto thee, that, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed. Okay. So what things have you cleared up when you use that set of scriptures? I'm going to take a shot at that. I see you mumbling over there. Uh, what, what did you just clear up? You cleared up that, that's, uh, that Jesus is pronouncing that this is the first church. This is the real church. Yeah, this is my church. My church is his church. He's saying, I'm declaring. It's my church. Okay, and, and, and then he goes back and tells you how you get in my church. Yeah. Not how you get in somebody else's church, but this is how you get in my church. Okay, now, another thing I always like to share, and I've probably shared it with some of y'all. Okay, this is the first time the word church is ever mentioned in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, first time it's mentioned in the Bible. And I do believe probably the only time it's mentioned in the Gospels, because after that it's mentioned in the book of Acts. But this is how they introduced the word church. Okay? And it was introduced by Jesus Christ, the owner of the church. Amen. And so if the church belongs to him, then I'm quite sure he can tell you how to get in it. Amen. Amen. And he can tell, he's telling him, you know, and here's the keys to it. I gave the keys to one man by name. Yes, he did. Okay? And all the apostles were there with him when he said that. And so then when he preached Acts 2 and 38, none of them argued. They helped them baptize them. That's right. Amen. Yeah. And so there is no disagreeance in the Bible. The disagreeance is because of men. That's right. That's right. They, they the ones who come and change the gospel and, 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 and water it down and, and, and say what Paul said is different than what Jesus said and all these different things. But the Bible don't say that. Okay, and so that is some of the most important work that you can do. Yeah. 
Then it's time to have a prayer meeting. If they ain't already repent, now they repent again. Listen, let's pray again. Amen. You know, let's pray again. And then ask them, you know, do you want to be baptized? You know, and, and if, you know, they start talking about their previous baptism, of course, you can take them to Acts 19 and, and, and say there is a scripture that allows you to be baptized again. But yeah. we'll go into that the next time. Okay? But, but what I want to do there is establish the word of God in the beginning part. And so that's why I gave copies out to people. You need to go and study that. And here, here's what I always do, okay? Like that Bible study, I will take it and start out with the first scripture. And then after the first set of scriptures, write go to. And then put the next scripture you're going to go to. And we get to that one, okay? At the end of the reading there, put go to, okay? Just put the, um, I used to put the initials of the Bible study up there where I'm writing them at. Now, like this was, um, um, keys to the kingdom of God, and so I put those initials up there at the first scripture, okay? And so if you can remember the first scripture, you can teach the whole Bible study, and you don't have to take your notes with you. Amen. So you're saying you put those notes in your Bible? Yeah. So when you get to that, that, that scripture... I'm talking about the scriptures. That's right. Yeah. I'm saying because when you get to that scripture, you read that first one, at the end of scripture, you gotta go to... to Go to the next scripture. Right, I, I didn't know if you were writing it in the notes. You, you didn't make it clear. No, right. not on it. You're right. Those you got it. Okay. Right and even the Bible. explanation. But if you just have your, your Bible with you and you run into somebody in this time to talk about it or they, they ask a question about, oh, you apostolic, why do y'all believe such and such? You can go to that first scripture and then show them. Because they say, go to the next one, go to the next one, and go to the next one. And keep it, 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 it'll have you lined up. Okay? And after you've done that for a while, you'll be able to remember them anyway. Right. But you'll always have that guide there. You know, that'd be a good thing for a young person. Okay, if you have all that mind of another young person asking you, well, you give a Bible straight like right now. And they go home thinking, wow, she knew more than my parents. Because <laughs> you have the scriptures right there. And, you and another thing that will do is help you not to be nervous. Because the answers to the questions is right there in the scriptures. It's already set up. Okay? And then, of course, as you do your own reading and study, you'll have more and more things. Because as you walk with God, you start getting more and more revelation. And so then God will quicken you to other scriptures to ask, ask questions. Okay? But you'll have uh, the solid foundation right there and have it always ready in your Bible. Amen. And you can go from one place to another. Okay? And so, now... The next time we do this, we're going we gonna to go in the place where if they ask more questions, okay? And we're going to line those up where your answers exactly are, right. okay? But right there, if you just taught somebody who Jesus is, the fact that Jesus got baptized, and the fact that they got to repent, they got to be born again in the water and the spirit, and who's Jesus' church is. Right. And they're going to ask you, say, well, how come that's the only, how can that be the only church? And I said, well, people change the names and come up with a different stuff, but that's the that's the church that Jesus said is here. Who am I to argue with Jesus? Exactly. Amen. Amen. Right. Yeah. And, and if they want to, if they're interested, just take them on into the book of Acts and go after, okay, Acts 2.38 and read the rest of it because it will explain the rest of it. Okay, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Okay, so the rest of the, the rest of the New Testament is written by the apostles. Okay? And so we spoke, we follow the apostles' doctrine and the breaking of bread and, and so on and so forth. And this is the church that got added to the church daily. Once again, the church, not a bunch of churches. Right. Okay? And so it's all right there. When you get them that far, they ask the book of Acts to take care of the rest of them. Right. Here's your proof. Here's your proof. So um, the Bible is set up to make it easy for you. Set up to make it easy for you. Please stand. Now I know I can walk all over and jump up and down and fly all over the place. Good. But God won't want me to share that. Like I say, some little things. Make sure you prepare. Make sure when you get ready to teach somebody a Bible study, take them somewhere where they won't be distracted. Yeah. Amen. Okay? Don't go someplace where it's loud or a bunch of people making a bunch of noise or you know, and, 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 and please ask them, turn off their television set. 
You know, we, we don't need to watch videos and all that kind of stuff. Why we don't we gonna pay attention to the word of God? Because then they go, the attention span, right. you know. Right. What you say? You know, you just you just wasted your hour that you spent there. Yeah. Okay. No, another thing to do. If you go teach somebody a Bible study, unless you're going to meet them outside somewhere in the public, take another person with you. That way you have a witness. Nobody can't say that you did something you ain't had no business. Okay? Um, that doesn't always happen, but it can happen. So take another person with you. Okay? Especially if, if you're a man and you're going to take, 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 if, your, if your wife can't go with you, then take another brother with you. Okay? And then go someplace public and do it. Or that way you won't get a reproach. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. Anybody got questions? Comments? All right. Lord, in the name of Jesus, help us, Lord God, to be the best Bible study teaching church yes. in the area, Lord. Yes. Help us to share the word of God. Yes. Help us to share it on the phone. Yes. Help us to share it in the park. Yes. Help us to share it at work. Yes. Help us to share it when people invite us to their home. Yes. Lord God, let the anointing of your spirit be upon us, Lord God, that you quicken us to be able to teach and answer the questions, Lord. And I pray in the name of Jesus, open doors, yes. okay? Open up hearts that want to receive the word of God, Amen. that we may increase your church. Yes. Hallelujah. With more worshipers, for you look for such to worship you. We want true worshipers, hallelujah, that worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes. Help us to share the truth, Lord, yes. that people will want to worship you with everything that's in them, that they might be saved. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.